Hidden bosses are a weird part of video games. Usually a hidden boss is a sort of secret reward for the player, offering them elaborate loot and considerable bragging rights for finding and beating an enemy that many would never even encounter. However, sometimes this isn't the purpose of a hidden boss whatsoever, because there are plenty of bosses that are obscured so intensely that it's very clear that the intent isn't to make you work to find it, but rather to legitimately hide it from you. Wilder yet, there are plenty of games that have cut bosses from the game itself, only for hardy nerds to code the boss back into the game, letting you get involved in fights that developers legitimately did not intend for you to access. Of course, it is unusual to fight a boss that genuinely feels like you weren't supposed to find it, but it's also profoundly rewarding, especially in renowned games like Dark Souls or Undertale. Although some require you to get deep into the game's codes to patch in said bosses, the knowledge that you are having a super rare gaming experience is unique and exciting enough that it is often well worth it in the end. With that in mind, I'm Will for Our Culture, and here are 10 video game bosses you weren't supposed to find. 10. Great One Beast, Bloodborne Showcasing FromSoft's great, noble tradition of having fully animated bosses cut from the game and hidden in their files is the Great One Beast. The boss was presumably patched out because his name was a little weird, as there seems to be little other reason for him to have got the boot otherwise. He's fully animated and even has specialized textures added in. For example, his spooky goth fur burns away when you use fire on him. Speculation has run rampant with this special pooch, with fans theorizing it could be everything from the big boss of the Loran silver beasts to an initial draft of the watchdog boss. Either way, with a spoonful of hope and a special glyph cobe to find its dungeon, you too can fight Bloodborne's Clifford, the big goth dog. 9. Tsar Dragon Final Fantasy VI with a full sprite, customized stats, and even a translated taunt message, the Tsar Dragon, or Kaiser Dragon, is perhaps the most finished boss not to be implemented in a final game. As such, it's perhaps no surprise that fans were immediately on the code like, well, fans on cut code. It was discovered that, although the Drake had been dummied out of the original SNES version of FF6, it could be fought in the various remakes of the game. As such, some plucky coders moved the Dragon script across into the original ROMs, meaning you could play a version of the SNES game that also had a full battle with the Kaiser Dragon inside it. As they are wanton to do, rumors spread across the internet that the Tsar Dragon was unlockable in the game, where it could supposedly be accessed after petrifying the Blue Dragon, who was, unsurprisingly, immune to petrification. 8. Octavia von Seckendorf Grief Syndrome Compared to the majority of other bosses on this list, Octavia von Seckendorf is fairly easy to unlock. In order to fight her, you just need to do one thing die. Because the boss fight becomes available whenever one of the playable characters, Sayaka, dies. Now, in theory, this is an easy method, but in practice, it's a little more complicated. Because Grief Syndrome works with a kind of permadeath system that makes it so when a character dies, you can no longer play as them unless you begin another new game. Combine this with the fact that Sayaka is easily the most powerful character in the game, and suddenly you're in for a much more difficult scenario. This means that it's entirely counterintuitive to unlock Octavia, and yet you're still compelled to, in order to feel like you've truly completed the game. Now, while you do need to let Sayaka die in order to get several of the game's endings, you're left feeling like you're doing something wrong every time you send her off to her ultimate demise. 7. Crocomire Metroid Zero Mission the Crocomire is a mini-boss that appeared in Super Metroid in a fascinating fight that requires you to use your weapons to push him into some lava to kill him. It's a method that feels like the battle between Mario and Bowser all grown up. Weirdly, after this enemy appears to have gotten a kind of curse, it was planned to exist in Metroid Zero Mission, before being cut from the GBA game altogether. Interestingly though, the sprite still exists in Zero Mission, with an appearance that suggests the version we take on in Super Metroid may have already been injured when we go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it. Aware of the legitimate tragedy of this little lizard man being nixed from the game, a few noble individuals patched the creature into a ROM version, even adding animations that hadn't been created in the first place. As such, you can still fight Crocomire in Zero Mission, and it's just one other thing to be grateful to the greasy denizens of the internet for. 6. Jelly the Octopus, Cuphead 
With Cuphead being a game that is mostly devilishly hard boss battles, it's natural that a few didn't quite make the cut. Of these various abandoned cartoons, the most tragic is that of Jelly the Octopus, a friendly looking clown coloured octopus who you can only find by sneaking into the game's files through debug mode. Now it is initially a tragic loss because the thing is so cute looking, but the other shame is that Jelly appears to be a sort of tutorial, which is the kind of thing that would be much appreciated in a difficult game like Cuphead. Jelly teaches you how to parry by randomly lighting his tentacled head in order to let you having a go at deflecting it. Now, despite not existing in the proper game, Jelly has a surprisingly passionate fanbase, showing that you can be a winner even if you don't make the final cut. 5. King Jar Eel – Dark Souls as I've already alluded to, FromSoft has a long, long history with practically finishing bosses and then removing them at the last minute. While pretty much every game in their repertoire has examples of this, the first and most exciting is that of King Jar Eel. The king is thought to be one of the four kings that can be found and fought in the new Londo ruins, as his armor does bear a resemblance to theirs. This makes logical sense, as the kings could have been designed as separate boss battles at first before being made into a single boss battle that now exists in the game. However, should you be brave enough to invest time and a save file, you can fight King Jar Eel in all his bizarrely named glory by modifying him to appear in the place of another boss. Uniquely, this hidden king even has his own special moveset, as he uses what appear to be slightly altered versions of old King Alan's attacks from Demon Souls. 4. Gojira Fallout New Vegas Tragically, and I'm I'm really sorry about this guys, but this is not an entry that reveals that the French heavy metal band Gojira once existed in Fallout New Vegas. Look, I, I wish it were, I do, but it's not. I, I just want to get it out of the way. However, Gojira, or better known as Godzilla to you racists, is a huge fire-breathing lizard, so you can't be disappointed for too long. The creature is essentially a huge version of the gecko enemy, with one crucial difference, its damage. Gojira's breath attack was coded to do insane amounts of damage, making it capable of killing just about any other enemy in the game. As such, it's perhaps understandable that he was cut out of the game, as the developers likely realised that having this ticking time bomb roaming around the wasteland was a shortcut to disaster for players. However, should you want your own pet dinosaur, you need only use the console commands that pops the beast back in the game. Oh, and you know what, make yourself invincible at the same time, you know, just to be safe. Number 3. Hades – Final Fantasy IX Obligatory nod to Final Fantasy IX being the best Final Fantasy game. Now let's talk about Hades, its secret boss. It is thought that the God of the Dead was intended to be the final boss of the game, but was instead relegated to being a secret super boss so that Necron could instead take that spotlight and quote the Phantom Menace at you. Yes, the localization has not aged well. Given that Necron is probably the weakest point in an otherwise insanely good game, it's questionable as to whether this was the right choice, because Hades is so hidden away that you have a microscopic chance of finding him unless you already know the method of discovering him. Said method involves going to Memoria, entering the ocean room, and then moving off screen behind a rocky outcrop to your right. Doing so and then examining the area unlocks dialogue, specifically Hades' dialogue, where he basically tells you to step off or get ready to fight. This is the second hardest fight in the game after the other optional super boss, Ozma. If you actually beat Ozma before taking on Hades, he'll comment on it, and upon defeating him you unlock his synthesis shop, which is the only place you can craft the pumice, an item that lets daggers summon the Ark, which is the most powerful Eidolon in the game. 2. Flaming Undead Giant – Bloodborne Proving that even some of Bloodborne's non-cut bosses are still incredibly hard to find is the Undead Flaming Giant, a fiery variant of the boss that you'll inevitably encounter on your time skulking around the game's chalice dungeons. Despite being revealed in 2014 during a showcase of the game, this enemy wouldn't be found until a whopping three years later, as the oversized chap simply didn't appear to be in the game at all. In fact, when Bloodborne was released, he was officially considered cut content, largely considered to have been one of the many badass additions to the series that simply didn't make the final cut. Then, a group of players dedicated to exploring these dungeons managed to find him, much to everyone's collective surprise and delight. Although it's been suggested that many more players have found the fiery entity and simply not recognised how rare he was, it's still a joy to see that a creature this big still managed to, somehow, be the sneakiest enemy in Bloodborne. 1. So Sorry, Undertale 
Now, you could play Undertale every day for the rest of your life, and not only would you be a monster because you'd eventually have to do the genocide ending, but you'd also definitely miss one boss every single time. So Sorry is said boss, and is incredibly well hidden, potentially for very good reason. When Undertale was being kickstarted, there was a joke tier at $1,000 that would allow your fan troll to become a character in the game, which was a reference to Homestuck, a popular internet comic at the time. An artist who goes under the name of Samuel actually offered offered to pay this, should Toby Fox allow his character in the game. Said character was known as Samael Butter Dragon, and as the game may suggest, the character was depicted in some moderately sketchy art. The pair agreed to change Butter Dragon's name and have him appear in limited form. As such, you can only find and fight So Sorry by reading a specific sign in a secret room in the Hotland level on October 10th, between 8 and 9 o'clock at night. While the character's creator has come under a lot of abuse, the boss is so well hidden that you can only truly find it if you know what you're looking for, and even if you did, the encounter itself doesn't contain any suggestion as to the figure's salacious alternate life. And there you have it folks, 10 video game bosses you weren't supposed to find. Feel free to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, and drop me a follow on Twitter at uslidaorgu. I'm Will for What Culture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.